Under the relentless oppression of outdated corporate practices, the vast army of dissatisfied customers seems destined for frustration and disappointment. Led by David Powers, the caffeinated CXO, a group of renegades broke away from these antiquated systems to forge a new path in customer experience. Known as the Caffeinated Army, this group fights a constant battle not only to retain their independence from traditional methods, but also to revolutionize the way businesses interact with their customers. With David Powers, the caffeinated CXO at the helm, the Caffeinated Army have established a dynamic stronghold through the podcast CX Riot Radio. Broadcasting from their secret base, this podcast serves as a beacon for those seeking to escape the tyranny of poor customer service and outdated practices. Though the industry is fraught with challenges, the passionate members of the caffeinated army remain committed to their mission. They form alliances with like-minded individuals and organizations, always ready to adapt and innovate. With no true loyalty to the old ways, they will go to any lengths to ensure their vision of exceptional customer experience comes to fruition. As one of the caffeinated army, you must take a stand and massacre all who would stand opposed to excellence in customer experience. Be they corporate overlords, bad AI models, established companies, or otherwise. In Minecraft, of course. Now roll that beautiful bean footage Hey, welcome back to another episode of CX Riot Radio, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. That's right, I'm David, I'm your host, I'm the Caffeinated CXO, and welcome to CX Riot Radio. That's right, CX Riot Radio, where CX is customer experience, Riot, because... Let's face it, let's face it, and then radio, because it's a podcast. It's not actually on the radio. I hope you knew that. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Today's episode is brought to you by a copious amount of coffee and a ghost sour watermelon energy drink. So, because I don't run ads and I don't have sponsors... If you could be so kind, so generous, so kind-hearted as to like, review, comment, review, and share the show so we can make the show grow. I'd be much obliged if you could. So, today we're going to talk about the toggle tax. Nice try, Fed. I'm still not paying my taxes. That's right. So what is the toggle tax? Well, it's a very simple context, con- concept that uh, needs some explaining. And, uh, you know, but once you hear what it is, it'll make sense. And what the dangers are will jump out at you like a snake in a thing that it's hiding in. And, yeah. That's right. So, okay, so the toggle tax refers to the productivity loss experienced when employees frequently switch between different applications and systems, which is especially relevant for customer service agents in contact centers. So, well, and this is a podcast about customer experience, contact centers, and company culture. So the toggle tax fits right in. So, the toggle taxes um, thing on uh, productivity and how it affects productivity is a little bit crazy. Um, so, employees can spend up to four hours a week readjusting after switching contexts, accounting for about 9% of their total work time. So, already, already, without anything else toggle taxing 
the toggle tax takes away about 10% of their productivity right off the bat without anything else. So frequent shifting of focus leads to decreased efficiency and performance impacting the quality of customer service. Hmm. It also does something else, which again decreases the excellence and the rate of customer experience and customer service. And that is increased agent frustration and burnout. Now here's a crazy stat. Frequent tab switching causes significant frustration among agents. Wow. With 49% of employees considering leaving their jobs due to technological frustrations. So let's uh, let's compound the issue a little bit. Let's say you have like uh, three systems that you regularly go through, right? So email, your CRM, and let's say Slack, right? For a lack of better terms. Then to uh, make it worse, you, uh, you know, you have slow computers, weak internet, right? Faulty keyboards, faulty mouses. Right, you're using Internet Explorer on Windows 7, things like that, right? So 49% of employees consider leave, leaving their jobs due to technological frustrations. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, and then high pressure environments like call centers, let's face it, they're pretty high pressure. Um, they can exab exaberate, exasperate, exasperate. Uh, stress from managing multiple systems leading to decreased job satisfaction and higher turnover rates fantastic so now what does this mean for customer experience you might be wondering as if the answer wasn't clear enough so inefficient systems and constant toggling hinders agents ability to provide timely and accurate support leading to customer dissatisfaction and potential loss of business. A lot of the times, especially when something's incredibly frustrating, right? It's hard to keep it out of the voice, right? Or out of the chat. And if there's lots of long pauses while agents uh, wait for things to load and things like that, there's only so much someone's going to put up with nicely, right? So, um, poor customer experiences also due to system inefficiencies can uh, impact customer loyalty. 59% of customers are willing to stop doing business with a brand after several bad experiences. Me, I'm like one or two bad experiences. I'm gone. I'm solid. Gone. If I go to a coffee shop, right? And the first time I get there, I get their uh, product, their coffee, and there's coffee grinds at the bottom of the cup. You know, you've been there. I'll be like, okay, all right. It was a bad day. Someone didn't do it right. But if I go back and the same thing happens again, well, I, I'm probably not going back to that place. I don't care how ambient their stuff is. I don't care how nice how nice their coffee shop is there's coffee grounds in the coffee that's crazy I'm not going back that's nuts and so but here's the crux of the matter right constant switching between applications between systems between tabs even on the same system increases cognitive load leading to mental exhaustion it can also increase cortisol levels which is not good um toggling consumes like i said up to nine percent of work time um creating pressure to work faster which doesn't really translate into good customer service does it um fragmented attention leads to longer call times and reduced service quality uh, multiple sources of information can overwhelm agents, uh, making it challenging to find the right information quickly. 
Let's say you have uh, three knowledge bases. Why would you? I don't know. I'm using it as an example. Right? Or if the information is uh, that they need to spread out across different systems, as opposed to one consolidated knowledge base with a robust search feature, that could do it. Um, it can also increase uh, error rates. So juggling multiple applications increases the likelihood of mistakes, obviously. Obviously. So. Now, here are some signs. Some signs, some symptoms of the toggle tax having an effect. So. Extreme fatigue and lack of energy. There's a drop in productivity and service quality. Heightened emotional responses and conflicts. Detachments from responsibilities and colleagues. Persistent negativity about the job and the workplace. If your uh, people spend more time complaining about the computers than they complain about uh, other aspects of the job, you might have a problem, right? Uh, decreased motivation and interest in work. That's when the uh, tardies start adding up and the call-outs start going through. Uh, reduced attention span and careless handling of cases. And like I said before, increased sick leaves and avoidance of work. So, now there are some ways to mitigate the toggle tax, right? Some, uh, some maybe some tax deductibles that you could use. So, the first one is to streamline and integrate applications. Reduce the need for constant switching by integrating systems, obviously. Um, unified communication platforms. Implement platforms that bring together multiple functions. If you have uh, right, a chat program that you can do for internal chats, and also it brings in like uh, customer chats and Facebook Messenger and stuff like that, so much the better, right? Uh, you can train on efficient system use. So, uh, yeah, you want to get more efficient with the systems, right? You want to know them like the back of your hand. And the only way to do that is with uh, training and practice. So allow time for training and practice on the systems. It's important. All right. You can also use AI and automation to handle the routine tasks or... Uh, Re, which would reduce cognitive load. You can also set up agent assist cards and things like that so that they don't have to go and uh, run to the knowledge base or to Slack every time they have a question, right? So, uh, let's see. So, here's some other things they could do to uh, maybe have a, that little tax deduction, right? The little tax deduction on this. So uh, they can optimize the workspace layout, so allow them the ability to move windows across their screen into a way that makes sense for them, right? I've, I've worked at places where you couldn't adjust anything, right? It is what it was. It was what one um, senior manager liked 20 years ago and they were like, no, this is good. We're, we're keeping with this. Uh, you can also train the agents to uh, master keyboard shortcuts, right? Keyboard shortcuts will uh, save clicks, and clicks add up in time, right? So, um, prioritize tasks, of course. Um, they can take regular breaks. Now, I don't mean... Uh, I don't mean like, you know, every hour or something like that, but you know, regular consistent breaks. One break every two hours. So they're working an eight hour shift, they work two hours, they get a 15 minute break. Work two hours, they get a lunch. Work two hours, they get a break. Work two hours, they go home, right? Good for that. Um, advocate for better technology, especially if you're lacking in that area. It can be used, it can be, uh, build under a capital expense, especially if you need to replace a bunch of computers and upgrade a bunch of hardware and software, right? Because you, you don't want to be the place that has the crap computers, right? You don't want to be the place with the crap tech. 
You want, you don't, it doesn't even have to be state of the art. You don't need the newest and the greatest. You just need stuff that works and it works consistently without lag or slowdown. Boom. And then have people allow people to provide feedback on it. So the toggle tax is a real thing. And it skyrockets, uh, skyrockets turnover. And as much as uh, everybody would be like, yeah, no, that's not a real thing. Let them work. Let them work with what they got. Well, this is reality, right? This is real life. And, well, it is what it is. Are you going to help pay down the toggle tax? Or are you going to make it a burden on the people that interact with the most important part of your business, which is the customer? I don't know. Uh, part of the uh, part of running a successful company, a company worth being in business, is having a good employee experience, right? It's just as important as the customer experience. And like I've always said, and I always I always will say, C E X equals C X squared, where the employee experience dictates the customer experience doubly so. So, if you all of your employees are frustrated, if all of your employees are mad, if their cortisol levels are through the roof, if their exhaustion is just, you can feel it in the air, right? If everyone's getting burned out because they're waiting for things to load, right? Or it takes forever to start up their computer or switch between tabs or programs, you have an issue. And it's an issue that's easily fixed. And there's no reason not to fix that issue. The toggle tax doesn't have to cost 10% of your employees' productivity for the week. Right? That's crazy if you allow that. Why are you allowing that? Stop. Do what you have to do to make things better for your employees. And then your employees can do everything they can do to make things better for your customers. And then... What's going to happen is that your customers are going to take care of your business. You have to take care of your employees so they can take care of the customers so they can take care of the business. It's simple. It's a simple concept. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows how true it is. So why are we leaving one aspect of it off the table? right? Why are we allowing people to work off of Windows 7 in 2024? Windows 10 is going to be obsolete in 2025. It's going to be gone, right? There's not going to be any support for it. Windows 11, even though it has this like insane, insane like specs that you need on your computer to operate it, which is crazy to me, especially since it looks like Chrome OS. <coughs> it, it is what it is. Um, there's another thing that could possibly save a little bit of uh, uh, tab, toggle, tax, whatever, is switching over to Chrome OS, switching over to uh, Chromebooks, or you can even transform your old Windows machines into Chrome OS, which would save time. It's a less uh, weighty operating system. And most things work off of it, especially if all your programs are web-based. There ain't no reason not to. So, yeah, you lose certain capabilities, but, like, how many CSRs use Excel on a daily basis, right? That they couldn't use Google Sheets for, right? How many... Yeah, it, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, there you have it. What are your thoughts on this? Have you paid the toggle tax? Or do you have deductions to lower that tax burden? What income bracket are you on for the toggle tax? All right, that's it. Go ahead, like this video if you're watching on YouTube. 
if you got anything out of it. Um, if you really didn't like it, hit that thumbs down button twice for me. And uh, to let me know that you really didn't like it. Alright. So, I'll see you guys next time. CX Riot Radio. Bye.